the occupation when you served the county sheriff. Can you describe briefly for the commissioners your career in law enforcement? In uh, 1979, I served in Sheridan County as a deputy. I, uh, in, uh, in a certain case in the law enforcement officer, uh, I believe it was in 1982, I became a sergeant in the sheriff's Sheridan County Sheriff's Office. At that time, there was uh, the sheriff and eight deputies. Uh, in 1986, the Rushville City and Hayes Springs City and uh, the commissioners decided that they were going to do away with what basically was called countywide law enforcement in Sheridan County. At that time, then that left the sheriff and two deputies. Um, I worked as a at that time, basically the sheriff uh, and uh, both deputies worked day times. Was called out at night. Um, then um, that was up until. contract with the uh, sheriff's office. Uh, the contract said that I, I had to think that I was the sheriff and I got to be sheriff in 19, November 1994 um, because the uh, appointed sheriff had left I, after I'd won the office of sheriff to start <coughs> Anyway, so in uh, 96 July, I then got two more deputies, so I had four deputies. Um, then uh, we, Hay Springs had its own police force, so they decided to contract with me. Um, so we contracted the Hay Springs with one deputy, um, and I think it was 2006. They decided that they weren't going to contract with the sheriff's office no more, and they weren't going to provide their own police department. And so <coughs> that <coughs> the commissioners then allowed me to have wife slots for that case. And uh, then since then, uh, we've been running five slots. <coughs> the problem is, uh, in rural, uh, rural Nebraska, um, the officer's pay isn't that great. And <coughs> also, you hire a young person and get them certified and everything like that. They're not married, they find a significant other somewhere else and you leave a deputy because there is no, I shouldn't say no, but there's very few good jobs for spouses in certain deputies. So keeping the full staff is rather difficult. Also, I had about a year that I had two deputies that had medical problems. <coughs> One of them was on leave for eight months and the other one was on leave for four months. So, uh, even though I had slots for five, there was a lot of times that I just had four deputies. When was that leave that you were talking about? Uh, let's see, that was, leave. 2012. Um, and you mentioned back in the mid 80s, you, you were down to a sheriff and two deputies. 
Correct. And you're only on call at night. Correct. And there were still beer stores up in White Clay, right? There were four liquor stores in White Clay at that time. Um, let's talk a little bit about your deputies. You mentioned having some difficulty, but you've got quite a bit of stability in your office right now. Is that fair? Fair. What, how long is your, you've got a chief deputy and uh, three others? Four yeah. others? <coughs> yes. Uh, my chief deputy has been in the sheriff's office about 28 years. Uh, I got uh, another deputy that was uh, with the sheriff's office before it was cut down to two deputies. He come back in, uh, he was with the Rushville Police Department and he come back over the sheriff's office in uh, 96. And then <coughs> I got uh, the one from Hay Springs that I, I hired him when Hay Springs quit me and quit the contract. And he's been with me for about 12 years. And <coughs> I got a, the newest, well, not the newest, but the uh, youngest certified person has been with me, she's been with me about almost four years. And then in February I hired a uncertified individual who was a correction officer for me and uh, I'm putting me into right along training. Now I got him working in his own unit but he has to be with his in contact of another on-duty officer um, and uh, I got him getting him signed up to go to the academy this uh, I think it's in August of this year. So you expect him to be certified about three months after that? Yeah, the certification takes maybe 16 weeks for our and as he's out there right now, he can enforce the laws. Right. right. He just needs to be in proximity to a certified deputy. Right. There's there's certain things that he can't do until he's certified, but that's why we have to have him in proximity to another <coughs> officer. He can do like investigations, uh, write citations, uh, stuff like that. But um, I like to have a certified officer kind of overseeing him, make sure he's doing it right. So uh, it's fair to say you're planning on having one more officer here in 2017 than you did in 2016. Right. I, I had a, a full schedule in 2015 to five deputies. Um, I was she was a not certified, uh, and she was doing a good job investigating and stuff like that. We sent her to the academy. As you guys may or may not know, the academy has uh, a physical fitness requirement. Um, she tore <coughs> her knee up uh, the first day of basic and there was no talking to them, they just <laughs> went home. Um, is that five deputies a full allotment for you? Um, it was up until this last budget year. Uh, they did, uh, the commissioners did lot a enough money for me to hire a sixth deputy, okay. if I could find one. And are you actually looking for that person? Yes, I'd really like to uh, find a certified person to come in and uh, take the slot because basically that gets you up and rolling faster. Um, but like I say, the problems was in western Nebraska with uh, the size of the towns we got, and that's a requirement is if you're a deputy, you 
have to live inside Sheridan County, and uh, uh, a lot of times if they are dating or have a significant other, the significant other is a killing point because they can't find a decent job without driving a hundred miles. I understand that. We have the same problems. Um, let's talk about your hours of coverage then with these five deputies. What are your hours of coverage in Orange County? Well, <coughs> me and the chief deputy work daytime. <coughs> Usually that's for the chief deputy it's <coughs> eight to five. For me it's about six thirty seven in the morning till six thirty seven at night. <coughs> uh, then if uh, somebody's sick or on vacation, uh, it might be just me during the daytime and I move my chief deputy down to an evening slot. Uh, I got, I run a 3 to 12 and I have four men, four deputies. I run a 3 to 12, 3 in the afternoon to 12 at night and 9 to 6 in the morning and then if uh, they they had issues, uh, they would uh, <coughs> basically call me, see if I'd come out, if uh, if it was closer for Hay Springs, I have an officer that lived in Hay Springs, I would have him call that officer and see if he would then could uh, help take the call. Um, you know, there's there's issues. A man's got a family. He may not have a babysitter. He may have been got off work and had a couple drinks, and so you can't have him out on the street. Um, so then I'd go to the next one that was supposed to come on at uh, eight in the morning, and. Uh, Usually by that time I was dressed and headed out the door. Um, what are the, the hours to serve uh, or sell alcohol in Sheridan County? Well, six to midnight in Rushville, except they got that two hour deal where the city council could approve special occasions where they can be up to open to <coughs> 2 o'clock. Um, A Springs, they, I think they're 6. They can sell at 6, but most generally they don't open till 7 to midnight. What is it for just Sheridan County, those places that are in the county, not in a different town or village? Well, basically follow the state law. And you you have from 8 a.m. till probably 6 p.m. double or triple coverage on your ships there? Between you and your Most team? days, yes. And from 6, a, or 6 p.m. to midnight, you've got at least double coverage during those times? Most days. How long does it take you to respond to white play? It depends whether it's uh, at the speed limit or whether it's urgent call. What is the speed limit? 60 mile an hour. How long do you take it to get there if you follow the speed limit? Well, if you believe one of the state road department signs is 19 <coughs> miles to White Clay from Rushville, but it's 22 miles from Rush, uh, White Clay back to Rushville. <laughs> so, <laughs> so anyway, it takes you probably 18, 20 minutes. And if you're if you decide that you need to get there more urgently and say drive 80 miles an hour, what do you what do you have? Um, 13 to 16 minutes. Um, do you have? Um, you make time within the schedule that we talked about earlier for you and your deputies to patrol in White Clay. Yeah. What do you? What do you, What's your practice? Well, um, I try to uh, 
have somebody in white clay in the afternoons for a little while, depending on the call, paper service, and other stuff we have in court. And stuff. But I try to have somebody in, in there in the afternoons, the mornings, not so much because in the white clay, the beer establishments don't open until late. So, anyway, so somewhere around 11 in the morning till 3, 4 o'clock in the afternoon, uh, depending on whether it's a busy day. And like on the 10th and the 15th of the month, it's busy in White Clay because uh, the 10th, that's food stamp day. They, we did have two grocery stores in White Clay, one was caught fire and burned down. But the other one does, even though they have a grocery store in Pine Ridge, a lot of Native American people live on the reservation uh, shop in White Clay. Uh, why I don't know. I've got theories about why they shop the groceries in white clay, but they've done this for years. And uh, uh, like I said, before the other grocery store burned down, uh, we had quite a bit of business. Uh, on the 15th and the first, of the ground first. Uh, Payday basically. Fifteenth uh, is a lot of Native Americans on the reservation get a check uh, from the federal government on the first, and then uh, on the fifteenth they get mothers get a check from the federal government. These people are not employed, so. So you have some days that you know are going to be busy with others. Right. And you make it a point to dedicate more in law, law enforcement to white clay in those days? It's possible, yes. Yeah. And what, what else, uh, well, I heard testimony here earlier from somebody that claimed that you or your deputies, when you go up there, you just sh sh drive right right through and don't, don't even stop. Or when you send them up there in the afternoon, is that the case? Or are you staying up there and spending some time up there? Well, you know, before I didn't keep a record of the time that was spent in White Clay. Um, and it was almost impossible to figure out how much time it was spent in White Clay. And so I developed a call sheet or a sheet that that they fell out for white clay. Um, it's the only it's the only place in Sheridan County that I require my deputies to write down the time they went into white clay and the time they leave white clay. This is the time they actually spent in white clay. But uh, since I developed that developed that you know, and you go with the radio logs where they might be called away, but average hour and a half, two hours. Um, we do a after after midnight or around midnight, we try to be in white light. Um, basically, we watch when the Beer establishments have closed up or closing up. And also, as mentioned earlier in testimony, they say that <coughs> people could be laying out in the cold and we just drive by and not do nothing. That ain't true. We uh, the reason we go that time of day, we go and check for these people that may have had too much to drink, uh, either passed out or went to sleep or whatever, get them up, see if they need medical attention and try to get them, if they don't need medical attention, we try to get them home. Um, By getting home, you mean taking to the to, to, uh, South Dakota on yes. the reservation? 
Yeah, so you'll, you'll transport people up there to take them on. Um, to Pine Ridge. If I go much further onto the reservation without a um, whole bunch of um, paperwork and stuff like that, um, my officers get stopped by the tribal police and want to know what we're doing up there because they think we're trying to interview on the reservation and their sovereign nation and they don't want any outside law enforcement. So for those people you do what you can within how the tribal law enforcement treats you? Yeah. Years, years ago we used to be able to... Uh, uh, I'll object here and there, maybe. there's no question. <coughs> okay. I'll sustain the objection. So, was it an hour and a half to two hours per day that since you've been keeping this log, is that what you're saying? Uh, uh, 20 plus hours a week. 20 plus hours a week, okay. Um, does that include responding to calls that you might get from there? Yeah, that's every call, every investigation, every time we just go up there and control. Um, when you're up there at midnight and you're looking for the time when these retailers might close their businesses, are you paying attention to whether or not they close on time? Yes. Have you uh, observed any of them selling past the midnight hour? I haven't, or my deputies would uh, inform me and write a report with the seeming violations of have you, your office had any complaints about these retailers breaking any uh, laws in 2016 or 2017? Third or fourth party. Third or fourth party, you say? Well, uh, were, were there any that you uh, deemed worthy of investigation? Uh, even if they're third or fourth party, we try to track down uh, the source. Uh, that has allegedly seen this happen or do that or whatever and uh, we find them and usually it's unfounded. You haven't cited them in the retailers in White Clay in 2016 or 2017 for any liquor law violations? No. Has anyone um, on behalf of, of this commission ever contacted you to discuss their uh, concerns or standards for law enforcement? Well, in 2002, I answered the letter to the commission here, and near as I can find, they wanted to know how many deputies I had and how far it was to white life. Because I filed my response letter to them. Um, then, uh, December, I think I got a letter this last December, first of January, uh, requesting some information. Anything else that would have suggested that, that you should operate your, your department differently in terms of providing law enforcement and sheriff County? You no, know, I I've uh, had the pleasure of visiting with a couple of members of the liquor commission in White Clay in years past, but there was nothing suggested how to change what I was doing. <coughs> Talk about your your budget briefly. Obviously, your as a, your sheriff's office has a budget from Sheridan County. Yes. Um, do you uh, exceed that budget? Um, I'm just talking about the sheriff's office budget, yeah. not your detention center budget. Yeah, I am. Uh, when I do my budget, you know, I'm uh, thinking about what may happen, and I put a little extra money in there. And over the years, the commissioners have proved the budget that's a little higher than what I need. So 
uh, known since I've been sheriff, but never went over budget. In fact, have you been well under budget? Dime, Jeff, so sure, definitely. In, in, in the last five years, you've been under budget by tens of thousands of dollars? No, uh, sometimes 30, 40 thousand. And it's fair to say that Sheridan County hasn't denied you any uh, funds that prevented you from having the tools or equipment you need to appropriately um, <coughs> provide law enforcement in Sheridan County. Um, in fact, for this year, you got a, uh, even though you were under budget last year, you, you still got another substantial increase in your budget. Is that right? Yes. You were asked to gather some records, um, I think, either by the commission or for somebody else, and I want to just mention that for some particular uh, months of April and August in 2014, 15, and 16. Do you recall that? Yes, I believe that was uh, Attorney, I'm going to mess his name up, but uh, Net or Munch. 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 Oh, yes. Munch. Oh, you um, not the two, so sorry, John. Um, now those those records, um, they were they were uh, um, pre dispatch records. Is that right? Right. We call them uh, <coughs> dispatch radio logs, and they contain uh, the records that you were able to provide dispatch radio logs for the entire county. Right. Do they also pertain or contain records uh, for for calls from Pine Ridge Reservation itself? Yes. Why is that? Well. Landlines are a thing of the past. Everybody got a cell phone. Um, when they put the nursing home just southwest of White Clay, um, they put up a tower just south of White Clay. And uh, of course, any 911 calls that will hit that tower comes to my dispatch instead of going to the overall of dispatch. So will you get calls that are related to events on Pine Ridge Reservation um, that come to your dispatch uh, people in yes. Sheridan County? Do you then have to relay those calls back up to Pine Ridge Reservation so they can take care of whatever issue might be? The Porcupine Dispatch is what we relay it to. <coughs> have these retailers that I represent, have they been cooperative with your office when you needed to have contact with them? Yes, they have. Do you know of any reason at present why they would not qualify to hold a liquor license? Are they seeking a renewal of the license for the same premises that they have right now? Yes. Uh, how long has she made an objection? Uh, I'm going to open one. Well, I'll show you. The county's got, got a recommendation. I'm assuming the sheriff has got a vote. I think you answered yes. yes. Yeah. And do you know of any reason that those premises aren't suitable for the sale of alcohol? The business, the buildings? Yes. Do you have a, a re decent relationship with the Nebraska State Patrol? Yes. You're able to cooperate with the, with them if need be for responses in Sheridan County and White Cliff? Yes. <coughs> um, the case springs um, I've heard they have liquor establishments. I want to get it from you, though, about what happened there. Do, do they utilize your county service for law enforcement? <coughs> yes, they do. They do now? Well, no. Okay. They do, when they call, have a problem, we go just like we do with anybody in the county. We, we respond to their call. We do not patrol on a normal basis in Hay Springs. And you don't patrol in Hay Springs because um, they don't want to pay for that cooperation agreement? 
Yeah. We don't have a contract to give them law enforcement. Also, uh, that takes away from uh, Brushville, who doesn't pay for law enforcement protection. It would be fair to say then that Hay Springs, um, you spend less hours in Hay Springs than you do in White Clay. Outside of, I have, uh, now I have two deputies live in Hay Springs, and the reason they're still living there is they both own houses in Hay Springs, so they're not going to make the move. But they don't patrol them. <coughs> Just on the way over. <coughs> so it, is it fair to say that you spend more actual time working in White Clay than you do in Hay Springs? Oh, yeah. Has there ever been a time when the, the beer retailers in White Clay were shut down completely? Yes. When was that? The third and fourth of July in 1999. Were all the beer establishments closed? Everything was closed. For how long? Well, As you said, two days, right? Yeah. It was, <coughs> we, uh, we closed them on the morning of the 3rd, and they didn't reopen until the morning of the 5th. What happened in the rest of the <coughs> with regard to beer and liquor sales when that happened? Objection, you're wrong. Sustained. decade just speaking about your office um, your workforce has been <coughs> fairly stable uh, in terms of the number right okay and that includes up to five deputies like you have now yeah um, the hours devoted by your force to, to white clay remain uh, pretty much the same yes um, your response to complaints in white clay has been the same yes and your budget's always been adequate. Yes. Yeah. I don't have anything else. Cross examination now. Sheriff, I understand you to say that you have a log that shows that you work 20 hours a week or your department does in white play. Is that correct? Yes. And is that a log different from the log that was supplied for some to the public records requests that are before this commission in evidence? You never supplied that law, did you? Nobody was ever asked. You never supplied that law, did you? I'm going to object. There's no, no foundation. There's no indication that there's a request. I'm going to sustain the objection that I brought to foundation. You have it with you? No. Well, I'm asking for it right now. Is it in this room? No object. That's an improper request of a witness. They didn't issue a subpoena for this witness, which he could have done. Well, it's not improper if it's in this room. Hold on a second. I'm going to sustain the objection, and I'll ask. Do you have that document with you today, Sheriff Officer? It's in my cruiser about three blocks down there. The question I'm going to ask, and, and, I'll, and I would try to get in, you stated earlier that there were some public record request for hours in white place, correct? You received? No, I didn't say I received a request from the liquor commission about the record. Did you supply those records? Um, Jamie and Simmons Please send you a, send the liquor commission a letter. Yeah, I, I agree. I, I will agree. Now, stipulate that we receive a letter saying how as far as keep those documents up. We do have some evidence. But I, I guess the question is, when did you create? When did you start doing this document? This this log. What? Middle of November. Sure. Middle of November of 2016. Yeah. Mr. Donovan, can you uh, exhibit 156 in the materials before you? So, <coughs> 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 
be in one of those bound bonds. You want to box, yeah, one of the other books, share. It depends on the outside cover, which you do this for each one. So if you yeah, up there. 155. It's in there. All right, and now take a look at exhibit 154. I had the wrong number. 155, I think, is the right number. Did I say 156? 155. Is that a letter dated January 25, 2017 from the Nebraska Liquor Control Commission to you? Uh, January 25, 2015. 17. 17. Is it to you? Sheriff Terry Robinson. Is that you? Yes. Is the address your address? P.O. Box 510, Rushfield, Nebraska? Yes. Did you receive the letter? Yes. Did you respond to the letter? That's the letter I forwarded on to our, my county attorney, Damien Simmons. So the answer is, is it not, that you never responded to the letter? No, I did not. You turned the letter over to the county attorney, correct? That's correct. And in this exhibit, 155, beginning on page 3, is a February 10, 2017 letter from the county attorney of Sheridan County, correct? It appears to be yes. And that letter is directed to the Nebraska Liquor Control Commission. Attention, Mr. Roop. Is that correct? That's correct. And is this the only response you've ever made to the inquiry of the Nebraska Liquor Control Commission contained in that letter? I'm going to object. He didn't make the response. The county attorney did. Well, is this the only response ever made by you or on your behalf in response to the inquiry of the Liquor Control Commission, Sheriff? Yes. So you didn't disclose the law when you started to keep in November, did you? It's on there on page six. I might take the answer from the witness, Mr. Snyder. Well, you've got an here can say it. You've got a right here. Your gentlemen, the exhibit speak for itself. I want the witness's answer. Did you supply the law you testified about today or not? Yes or no? I'm going to object. That's argumentative. And, uh, no argument in that. I just want a yes or a no. Can you let me finish? No, I have a question, Danny. You haven't objected. I What's just, the answer? I just did. The gentleman. Objecting. Gentlemen, there was a question made and an objection. I would appreciate being able to rule on the objection before you start arguing amongst yourself. I haven't okay. heard an objection, sir. Sir. So, he just interrupted. There was no objection asserted. All right. I thought I heard an objection, so I'll go on and I apologize if I was incorrect on that. I thought he was making an objection on foundation. The objection... I'm in, may I, I wasn't finished with my objection, but I'm going to object uh, uh, that the exhibit also speaks for itself. And on uh, page 6 and 7, there is a log from White Clay on here, and it's inappropriate to badger this witness about not having a log from White Clay when there is a log that starts in November of 16, which is exactly what this witness testified. I move to strike all of those comments. That's not an objection. There isn't a, there isn't a rule of evidence. There isn't a word that suggests a rule of evidence cited in that. And the only opportunity to make an objection has to be based on the rules of evidence. That was a speech. And my question had nothing to do with it. My question is, did you supply the log? Yes or no? Do we got any attorney yet? And it's in your vehicle today? Yes. And it's current as of when? Um, in the April. In the end of April of what year? 17, sir. Well, it's not current to the end of April. This is the 6th. Oh, uh, excuse me, March. All right, your testimony is that Exhibit 155 gives us some information from some log. Does it give us information from the log you just described? This was a database I completed off the log. So yeah. now your testimony is that you wrote this letter? No. This, this 
database here that was applied to the county attorney, I typed out what the laws were that the deputies turned in and made a database out of it and supplied that to the county attorney. And by that you're referring to a chart that follows the letter of the county attorney, is that correct? Right. Now is it your testimony that you typed out this chart? Yes. You typed it out in what kind of a computer program? It's Excel. And uh, you uh, typed this chart out at what location? I'm going to object. This is irrelevant and unnecessary in, in delaying these proceedings. Well, to figure out what he typed it on and... I'll withdraw the, what, it, what you typed it on question. I was going to say that that is a little um, beyond so please continue. I'm interested in this, Sheriff. Is it your testimony that your people are in white clay every night? I didn't say every night. Are they there three nights a week? Well, you look at the date on the... Answer my question, please. Are they there three nights a week? I'm going to object. This is badgering and argumentative. It doesn't have to be the yeah. answer. Well, John, I'm referring to John. Allow, allow the witness to respond. I appreciate us if we would uh, spend a long day to calm the emotions down a bit and, and go from that. The question is, the, 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 the question I believe is relevant, is, are, is your testimony I'm going to state it correctly, that your officers are in White Clay approximately two hours every evening. What is that? Not every night. The date this exhibit shows the date they were in there, the time they spent there each time the hours they was in there and what they was in there for. And this chart begins January 1 of 2017, doesn't it? This one does. And what it shows us, if we look at it, is that, for example, on the first entry, you got there at four minutes after midnight and you left at 52 minutes after midnight. Is that correct? Um, Four minutes after midnight, 52 minutes after midnight, 48 minutes. Which officer was that? That is not in the in this database. So there's no way to tell that, is there? No. Furthermore, there's no way to tell whether there was a contact with a human being, is there? No, not by this chart. And there's nothing in this chart to suggest whether anybody got out of the cruiser, is there? Not on that date. And there's no suggestion in this chart that there was any contact with dispatch, is there? Not on this. But your dispatch records contain every bit of that data, don't they? If they call in. And you, well, your officers are expected to call in, aren't they? If they just have a 1073 and they get out and check them out, a lot of times they don't call that in. Well, you supplied, did you not, records for 2014, 2015, and 2016 from dispatch. Right. They supply all of that data, don't they? If the officer called in. Or if he was them. called, sir. Yeah, or if he was called, it's on the dispatch call. And that's the dispatch data identifies the officer, the time, the minute, the purpose, Contact with a person, correct? If they have contact with a person. So let me ask you this. Why did you start to keep a separate log? You've got an electronic dispatch record that's kept the way that all of the other law enforcement officials in the state keep their records, don't you? Why did you start to keep a separate log? Because that log takes care of a whole county, and I wanted to know how much time we would actually spend in White Clay because everybody was asking. Wouldn't you have a perfectly good electronic record of that if your practice was to have your <coughs> phone in on the dispatch log and say at White Clay and phone out saying party White Clay? No, they don't use their phone. They use the radio. Well, that they could do that. Radio instead of phone. Is that a major? Is that how it works? 
Right, but so it sure is, isn't it true that you created this separate law for the purpose of providing a document to this commission that would disclose less data than is available in your dispatch logs? No, I made this so I could prove white clay over Rushville, Hay Springs, out in the county without sitting there and going for hours trying to determine where the officer was or where the call was to. This is strictly in town of white clay. Well, let's talk about other towns in the county just to see how you do the work there. You've got a town named Antioch? Yep. How big? Antioch's got about four people in it. Got any liquor stores? Nope. Half the size of white clay, correct? Well, building wise, it's probably about <coughs> tenth the size of white clay. Have you got a log for it? No. You've got a town named Antioch, or named Lakeside, don't you? That's correct. How big is it? Oh, um, there's probably 25 people in it. How many liquor establishments? None. Got a log for it? Uh, no. You've got a town named, uh, or had a town named Hoffman? For my time. Nobody there anymore? Yeah, they ain't even building there. And you've got a town named Hay Springs. How big? Hay Springs is probably around 550, 600. Got a log for it? No. You got a town named Gordon, 1500? Yeah, they have their own police department. You got a log for it? I don't have a log for it. You go over there, don't you? It's in the county, yes. A third of the people in the county live there, don't they? About a third? Uh, the last census in Sheridan uh -huh. County, I think it was 5,100 and some people live in Sheridan County. Sheriff, I noticed that you said that you've got uh, a complement of people working for you now, and you gave us their periods of service. How many of those are Native Americans? I'm going to object on relevance. I'm not sure to do with the accuracy of law enforcement. Mine stage. Any other Native American? Same objection. Sustained. Just looking for bias. Same objection. This isn't about bias, it's about adequacy of law enforcement. Oh, adequacy of law enforcement is influenced by bias. Don't you agree with that, Sheriff? No, I'm going to say... Is that your testimony? No. Same objection. I'm going to state objection. Okay, now I want to just ask you a question about my hearing. Did I hear you say no? The uh, presence or absence of bias doesn't influence law enforcement. Mr. Group, but he asked a question to which an, an, an objection was sustained. The answer, if there was one, should be stricken. You shouldn't be allowed to ask, ask <coughs> more questions about I, I'm going to sustain that objection from Mr. Dominant. I mean, I, I the, answer, the witness answered before I was able to, on my objection. Okay. Any statement made after I sustained the objection is not something to say. I heard you say a little while ago that your um, officers are careful to go around white flag and try to pick up homeless people. Is that true? I didn't say homeless people. What kind of people do you pick up after night? After people the night that's laying on the street, oh. maybe passed out. So there are just people who are passed out, but they may have homes. Is that true? That's true. And uh, so what you do as uh, a service is to take those people home to South Dakota. Is that true? Yes, if I can. Okay, now have you got that log? In here? Yes. Not going through every log I I couldn't answer that. Are you aware of a single entry in your dispatch records that suggests that you picked up a person passed out on the street in White Clay and took them home to South Dakota? One entry. In the in the ones that said evidence? Yes, exhibits one fifty two, one fifty three, one fifty four, one forty six, one forty seven. Anywhere in there? I'm sure there is. I haven't had a chance to go through there and see. <coughs> Maybe not home, the hospital. Now, Sheriff, you surely also in those logs expect, would you not, that there would be documentation of contact with law enforcement <coughs> from another agency in your dispatch logs. 
wouldn't you? I didn't understand that. Well, if the sheriff's deputy has contact with an officer from another agency, it's going to show up in your contact <coughs> account, isn't it? If he calls in, it will. Well, if you communicate with him other than through the window, it will, won't it? Patrol car to patrol car, it may not. Don't you make a record of those contacts? No. Sheriff, are you aware of a single entry anywhere in your dispatch logs where there's a record of you contacting anyone from Pine Ridge by transporting a person to their home? That is a law enforcement officer from Pine Ridge? Me personally, no. Or any of your deputies, sir? Not going through the logs, but I couldn't say that, sir. There were some questions asked of you about the adequacy of the premises where these people operate. Do you recall those questions? Yes. How often do you visit the premises? Myself, personally, I probably in at least in and out of the premises every two months. On one every two months, or maybe two every two months. On the occasions that you've been at the, any of these premises, have you inspected them for the presence of human urine or fecal material? Inside? Yes, sir. I haven't found no urine or fecal matter inside of the premises. Have you inspected them for it? Well, I walk in and look around. I guess if that's inspecting, I did inspect them. Have you inspected outside? Been around the premises, yes. Find that material there? Well, you can find wet spots on the ground. I didn't taste it to see if it was urine. Are you able to detect odors? Yes. Sheriff, are there other communities where you engage in that kind of law enforcement activity to inspect the premises for the presence of human urine or fecal material? When I go into the establishment, I always look around to see if there's anything out of the ordinary. Are there other communities where you transport people who are unconscious on the streets to their homes? I didn't say they were unconscious. I think you said passed out. Well, they were passed out. If I can get them woke up, if my deputy can get them woke up, they ain't unconscious no more. Is that word you used, yes? Yeah. If you can. If they don't, then we get medical for them. Where do you get that? Pine Ridge. Call the ambulance? Yes. Have you examined Exhibit 147? Have you seen it before? I don't know. I get a magnifying glass out to see it, but... I believe I have it. So I see an entry, April 26, on page 3. Do you see that? Page 3. Yes, sir. 26 April. You're looking at Exhibit 147? Yes. Page 1. Can you give me your witness and see if I can be sure that we're looking at the same exhibit? Yes, sir. I think you're on page Exhibit 157, sir. Sorry? Excuse me. That's okay. Thank 
Now, so 147, page 3, you see the increase 26 April. Lower than 30 page. I see a reference here to an officer by number 9617. Is that one of your people? That was that's an officer's number, yes, but she is no longer with me. Was 9617 one of your officers in April of 2016? Yes. Is your agency Agency 96? Uh, Shelby County is 96 1, and then I, not my bad number, and then I put a number behind it for each one of my officers. So if we see a badge number 96 1, that would be you. But if it's 9612, that would be a deputy, 9613 would be a deputy, and so on. Is that correct? Uh, yes. All right, and so in this entry on this page, I see there's a reference to a call about a female being assaulted by two males in white clay. You see that? Yes. And then it says, victim was not in Pine Ridge ER getting screened. All right. And as it continues, it says, your officer 9617. Would that, by the way, mean you had 17 officers at the time, or is that just no. sort of how the numbers go? Well, you keep them straight in the records by having bigger numbers, I suppose? Yes. Okay. I understand. All right. And then it, it, it says that officer 9617 advises dispatch that incident happened in South Dakota and not Nebraska. Do you see that? Right. Is that the sum total of the investigation of this assault? Well, if it happened into South Dakota, there was, and they're taking the Pine Ridge Hospital, there was probably a Pine Ridge officer called to the hospital, because she didn't log it or call in that the Pine Ridge officer talked to them. But, but my question really is simpler, and I understand you're imagining right now from experience what might have happened. It's simpler. Is that one line entry the sum total of the investigation? Well, if we find out it happened in another jurisdiction, we give the information to that jurisdiction, and then we're done with the investigation because we can't investigate in South Dakota. So I take it the answer to that question is yes, that one line is the sum total of the investigation. Is that true? I can't answer what happened in South Dakota, sir. I didn't ask you what happened in South Dakota. I asked you if that was the sum total of the investigation. Objection Foundation. Maybe you can clarify. I mean, okay. that was, was that the sum total of the investigation conducted by your department? Clear to you. Okay. Thank you, sir. All right. Now, uh, I just want to choose a couple more entries here to be sure that I understand how this uh, department works as it releases white clay. Uh, 